Matthew and Dominic Johan, wherever they went. So, can you hear them? Stream? Can Hello. You, can you hear them? Can you I, I hear think, what we're saying? I think they can hear you. Oh, Are we coming through? Is everything okay? Check, check. One, two. Mm, check, check. Say something on YouTube if you can hear us. Please. Ah, oh, it's working. Yeah, Perfect. Oh. It's working. Oh. Thank God. Okay, now we just have to be funny. Okay, it'll be easy. And well, now we, we can go into the theme song. I guess the second time is a lot better than the first time. <laughs> That's true for everything. It's perfect. Perfect the second time. Yeah, it, it was it was flawless that time. So I guess we got a, a very interesting show. Let's let's talk about the history of William Pugh. So William, like, where were you back when uh right right before the state of parable? You're already you're you've already been dragged into the back of the go. police. Headquarters. My my. We should close these. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll be okay. right. My history. Like, what? What are you? What kind of history are you talking about? Like my personal history? No, 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 no. Not like personal history. I'm just more interested in in like who were you before the Stanley Parable? Like, what was the things that you did? Like, how was family life? Like, before you were blown up, were you in school? Were you playing video games all the time? Or. Okay. Uh, yeah, I played video games. I, um, I, I played, I played, um, I played some video games. I went to a school. I, uh, I went to, I went to, I went to, I went to high school. I went to college, you know. I studied some things. I studied politics and, and law and maths and English literature. I used to be, I used to, tr I used to want to be an actor. Uh, I think I still want to be an actor. Uh, yeah, maybe I don't know. Uh, but uh, I did, I did acting stuff. I, I was involved in a lot of theatre. Uh, I had a very good time. My parents were both excellent beings. The brag. It's, it's pretty. It's, it's pretty. It's, it's, it's. It was all right. My 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 childhood was my childhood was fine. And uh, and it was it it was it was it was it was it was normal, right? It was normal. William, it was as normal as a childhood can get. You don't have to get get worked up about it. Okay, you're it's right. Fine. Next question. Well, thank you for asking me. <laughs> well, Dominic, uh, I was getting to you. I've I've got the show leveled out to where we'll get the equal balance of of more Dominic and more William. But were you guys childhood friends, or did you just kind of come together on on stuff and just? Or you yeah, just, I mean, or just coworkers. <laughs> so I grew up in Germany, um, and I think I'm, I met William for the first time when I was, I must have been around six or seven years old, and um, it was it was a, an art class in which we we did like um, my, I did my first sculpture in there. Um, actually, uh, it, it turned out to be a sculpture that looked very much, uh, it had a very strong resemblance to, to William's actual features. Um, and around my sixth or seventh birthday was also the first time I used a big knife for the first time. Um, and yeah, just one thing led to another and uh, we, we, we ended up kind of going separate ways for uh, roughly like 10, 15 years until... Uh, I posted some art online, and William William saw that, that yeah, and nice. thought that was that was pretty good. Uh, and now we're Hanging we're the out. voice we're the voices of Rick and Morty, and yeah, and that's it's the that's we've gone the, the whole way. We've gone from childhood friends to Rick and Morty. So what what is this Rick and Morty? Is it like uh, is it like a new project you're working on, or 
or yeah, uh, it's got it's got it's got seventeen nine seasons out, and it's you know it's got pretty popular in the whole McDonald's department, and and we think it's gonna be good. We think uh, we think it's gonna be good. We've been working for a long time on it. We've been working for twenty nine years on uh, on Rick and Marty. And, and that's pretty much all you all you have to say about that show at this point. It's uh, it's coming out for seventy nine seasons. It's going. It's over the hill, and it's it's going down. And it's never, never going to end. Never, ever. Yeah. ever. Um, how was your childhood? Sable? Um. Well, well, my childhood. I was I was born with this mask. How did you end up? What? How did you end up here? Oh, in this, this video frame. Oh, well. I was born in this frame a long time ago. No, <laughs> no. but really, uh, I started doing the secret zoo level thing back with. Uh, I started with doing some Twitter posts, and then I came up with the Facebook. But I really enjoyed Accounting Plus, and I was like, "This is going to be great." But I kept feeling like nobody's going to look for the secret zoo level after the whole Game Awards thing. So I wanted to kind of do something for you guys. So I wanted to be like, "Hey, I want everybody to keep looking for the secret zoo level because." You know, after the Game Awards, it's kind of like, who's going to be looking for it? So I started a Twitter page and started, you know, tweeting clues and hints. And then uh, the Wind Woker sent me a message and said, hey, come join our Secret Zoo Level Discord. And I said, okay. So as soon as I got in there, they were like, okay, you can't name yourself Secret Zoo Level. So I said, what am I going to name myself? So I chose Sizzle. So CZL is kind of like a, a rap name to, to work on the Who's That in the Tree remix. Uh, okay, now I'm curious, do, do you have any other online pseudonyms that you had before Sizzle, or is it, is it your first online identity? Like, what, what happened? Be, what's, the, what's the origin story here? I just question my leech. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you more if you tell me how to get to the secret zoo level. See that's that's the whole experience for the sizzle. As, as I'm calling it the sizzle now, I'll I'll totally tell my whole backstory. I'll tell my other pseudo names, my other characters, my other so-called YouTube channels and stuff. But only if if the fans that are that are watching here and leaving comments and in the Discord, you know, if if any of those people find the secret zoo level, I'll gladly take off this mask and share other things. But I, I feel like the secret of my identity is just as secret as the secret zoo level. So only you guys know that it exists. And maybe... Yeah, maybe, maybe you're threatening us. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I mean, like we said before the show, we, there's, there's certain things about the secret zoo level and, and where it is and like what phone number you have to call and stuff like that uh, that we can already talk about. But um, that fair enough. I mean, it's, it says our names at the in the top banner here, so that's that's fine. You know. You know, speaking of phone calls, I watched an interesting interview um, the other day where somebody called William up, and uh, William was Shia LaBeouf, <laughs> English Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. What's what's the story behind that? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. that was, that's a good. For people, for people, cut. for people who don't remember this classic piece of William Pugh history. I was I was in a cafe, uh, and I think um, I think uh, I think I think uh, there was a Twitter thing where Shia LaBeouf had posted his mobile phone number publicly, and he was like, "Okay, I'm going to be on this phone for the next three days as part of as part of a piece of performance up." And so what I did was I took the I took the I took a screenshot of the news header or something. And um, I, I, uh, I, and I changed the mobile number to mine, and then I post, then I tweeted that out, and that started getting retweets. And then people would, people who saw the retweet, retweet were trying the phone number on uh, on that image, and 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 so I was just like hanging out in in Cafe Nero, getting getting phone calls, and I'd just be like, hey, Shia LaBeouf. And the thing is, no one would no one would question it because because it seems so official, and everyone's tweeting about it's it. It's on the picture. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And like people were like, "Wait, are you are you Shia LaBeouf?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it's me." <laughs> yeah, the, and, the video <laughs> online was hilarious because the, the guy was like, "Yeah, this is this is this is uh, so and so," and you was like, "Yeah, this is Shia LaBeouf." And he he had no question about it whatsoever. He was just like, "Oh, so what's up, Shia?" <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but that that was definitely an amazing little little experience. So I uh, was check. You want to check some concept art out, Dom? Hell no! I, I have questions for you. Oh, for me? So, this, Go for it. this is this, this is the first episode of your format, right? Yeah, first episode. Um, what, what's the what's the kind of idea behind it? Um, if I if I can just guide people through like what this show is, we create together with you. Like, what's the what's the what's the use? What's the goal? What's the what's the pitch? Where's it going to? What are you doing with this? The, the goal. Format? The goal here is to expose as many people as we can to crows, crows, crows. Whether it be Dominic, William, Joe, Mikey, you know, any of the crows members are are cool to join in you know eventually if if they don't want to join then that's cool then you know i could i'm sure there's some uh questioners you know some discord members that might want to jump in or you know i basically want the goal to be not just about the secret zoo level it's not about me it's it's about the fans let's give the fans something you know let's kick back and relax with them you know weekly yeah monthly, you know just it's just a good format a, a good place for people to kind of get to know you guys without having to you know worry about people looking up your backstory when they could hear it directly from you it's like I wonder what William's doing I'll check this article that says William's the biggest douchebag ever and who the hell is Dominic you know we don't want that yeah. you know I'll let you guys talk say I'm the biggest douchebag ever <laughs> I want to see that I want to see those articles how, how surprising <laughs> to me what? I am so nice well, uh, so, well, it's it's like the article you did uh, for what the the game sutra is that the name of the place, William? Yeah, Gamma Sutra. Yeah, it's it's like that. You know, hearing it from you and your team is a lot better than reading somebody else's opinions or or the way that they you know think they know you. So why not best get to know you? You know, clear up any confusion. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm I'm I'm. Uh... I'm, I'm, I'm convinced by that for now. So feel free to proceed. <laughs> I'm not putting you on a guillotine. I'm not uh, throwing the police at you. I'm just saying, hey, crows, crows, crows. Hi. Okay, um, so this, <laughs> these, these concept art uh, things that uh, we, we, could, we could actually look at those. Uh, this, I sent you a couple things we can look at from the video game accounting. Okay, let's check them out. Brackets Plus, which uh, is one of our video games, and uh, it's VR. It's out on HTC Vive and PSVR. Um, and yeah, these, these are just some of the... These are, You're promoing this really well. Thank you. And these, uh, these, are, these are some of the... Uh, the, the, the yeah, little, little, little behind the scenes of, of how the sausage is made. Um, so usually we, we start by coming up with really good ideas and then putting them on paper in, in ways like these where it's like, what are the characters going to look like? What are the ships going to look like? What are the doors going to look like? You know, this, these are all the questions you have to ask yourself as a game developer. Where do you put the gun in the gun chest? How, wh what's on the drink can? It's the Spleebly logo. Thank you. Uh, just a little shout out to Spleebly for supporting development in ways that are beyond imagination. Shit. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, um, bricks. How, what do the bricks look like? Um, yeah, and then these these go to the three D department, which in our case is uh, Sweden. Sweden. Jakob Cavelli is our three D and environment artist, uh, doing brilliant work on all these these props and characters, uh, turning them into real things and making them real and almost like you can touch them. Almost. I wish. I wish you could. So what does what does Sean's really decent pizza taste like? Is it actually really decent? I mean, it's not it's not super great, but it's also not not bad. It's just really decent. Um, and I think he he made a good call um, on putting that on the packaging. Um, I mean, why why say why, why say something else? It's it's right <laughs> there in the box. Who came up with this concept for this the box design? Is it you? Oh, I did. Cool. 
I forgot about I did. it. Um, um, I'm the I'm the art director <laughs> at Cross Cross Cross. Uh, yeah, the the idea was kind of to um, to uh, get take this old old timey uh, early software uh, kind of Nintendo sixty four era kind of weird and broken early three D stuff. Uh, slap our own branding on there. Um, and then obviously we couldn't put the only for HTC Vive in there in the corner after we switched platforms, so we changed it to be something else. Oh, this, uh, I don't know how live we are with, with the timing here, um, but this is actually this is pretty live. some, okay, some of the first concept art we did for the game accounting um, back then in, uh, I, don't, I don't know when, like March 2016. 16, yeah. um, where we met with Justin Roiland and, and came up with the, the Tree Guy character. That was the first thing we came up with for the game, and it's it's still... I mean, we peaked at that point, let's be real, um, but the other, the other parts... <laughs> yeah, we, we peaked in minute one, you know, um, and then the, the other things were you know pretty decent. Uh, but yeah, there's some of the first ideas where it was just like, oh, hey, what if there's a guy who comes out of the tree and just goes, fuck you? And we said yes, because in comedy, that's what you do. You say yes. You say yes, please, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, please. That's the kind of that's the the comedy rule. Comedy rule. Yeah. Always say yes, please. He looks like baby tree guy. You can draw on this. Okay. Holy oh shit. yeah. Totally. Draw. Draw a hat for the character on the right coming out of the tree. I want to see that. This one. Uh, let's see. Two. Are you pointing one? Or... Oh, we can't this see. One? No, the one on the right. The one oh. on the right. Now, that's your practice hat. You can do one on that one. Do a quick practice hat, and then on we this can. One? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. And but no, 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 on the on the very right of the screen, I want to see you draw a hat. This I'm going to art direct. No, the, the one on the uh, way the one on right. The... That one. Yes, that would. Yeah. Okay. So. I'm not, oh. a, I'm not a very good drawler. Okay. This is kind of like Peter Pan situation. Good shadow. Good shadow. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, it's a little Robin Hood. Can you put a feather on the, on the cap? Oh, feathers could be my specialty then. <laughs> I, I think we, we struck gold here. This is this oh is, beautiful. The line width is perfectly in accordance with the original design. Um, can you now give him a little bow and arrow, please? Oh yeah. Let's see. Uh, well, let's see. It'll be a bow. Let's see. Yes. Nice. Yeah. I think uh, I think we got it. I don't know what kind uh, of bow. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Wait. He needs an ear. Mm -hmm. An ear? Yes. Uh, let's let's uh, put an ear on him here. That, that's, that's, that's perfect. I I feel like he's naked, so so I want to put a blue shirt on him. Yeah, really quick on though. I think we're we're over budget on this. Oh, it's okay. Beebly's paid me a lot of money to keep this going, so it's all good. There we go. Shirt. Ha <laughs> ha. I love it. It's beautiful. <sighs> this is. The, I think we we got more out of this concept art than uh, the actual project did. So congrats. <sighs> I love how. Yeah. I love how we can go to the comments now, and uh, Ian Peebles wants to know what the heck is the zoo. Um, well, you know, can I can I jump on this for you guys real quick? Can I answer? Go for it. So a zoo is where you keep a lot of animals, and those animals are used as figureheads for other people to tour that facility where the animals are, and you can look at the animals, and you can go and buy peanuts, and and you can. Um, 
the, the, some <coughs> zoos have little trolleys and stuff. Um, where they where they murdered and slaughtered Harambe, they actually have a little trolley car that that goes through the city and stuff there too. So there's buses and there's fish and there's uh, what other what other animals are in um, a zoo, Dominic? Doesn't matter. Um, the name zoo actually comes from uh, zoological garden, like our zoological park. That's uh, that's it's kind of an abbreviation, and uh, it actually comes from the Greek uh, zoos, which means animal. Uh, and then uh, obviously logos is studying, so it's the, the study of the animals, uh, and that's that's kind of what they're built for. Uh, you can find all kinds of animals in parks. Um, well, actually, well, well, the thing, the thing is, the thing is that actually, actually, if you're talking about parks, uh, if if you if you're talking about parks, don't talk about parks. Talk about zoos, and know that there's actually over a thousand zoos in existence right now, and over eighty percent of those zoos are in cities. Nice. Let's talk that... about royal menageries for a second. Like, uh, I guess, like before there were zoos, there was the menagerie. Which has you know a long history from you know, the ancient world to modern times. The oldest known zoological collection was revealed during excavations in Egypt in 2009. You know, there's there's early 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 zoos. <laughs> That's all the time we have for that question. Next question. Um, um, you grab yes. you grab the next question, Dominic. Um, here's a question. Uh, how did you start on this path? Have you done art for games before Crows, Crows, Crows? Uh, this, I think what did you do before good. us? Before us, uh, I was a lost soul, man. Um, so I, I uh, as I said, I grew up in Germany. Before, like, we split up, William and I, childhood friends, childhood enemies. Um, and I, I went to art school in Hamburg. That's a city in the north of Germany. Um, ended up going to a, like, a private art school, learned a little bit of animation, drawing, uh, communications design. Uh, dropped out of that, moved uh, to a different school, a public university, communications design again. Did a couple of years of that. Uh, and that's kind of where the overlap happened, where, where Crows kind of uh, got in there. And uh, I dropped it out of that one too. Um, double dropout, obviously the coolest person in the room. Uh, and I think, how many schools did you drop out of? One? What? Did you drop out twice? Well? I, I dropped out once. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I worked on a couple other games. Uh, I was on this documentary series, uh, Super Game Jam, where we made uh, little games in, in two days. Uh, Christopher Hedborg and I worked on something called Blossom there. Uh, I made a Twine game at one point, uh, unmentionable. There's uh, that's that's blossoming. Uh, oh. oh yeah, the, the the space game. Yeah, Impetus. That was like an online HTML game uh, where you have to hit a countdown button uh, to reset the timer, uh, lest the game destroys itself. Uh, I worked on Hotline Miami two for a little bit. Made some pixel art for that. And uh, the latest thing I worked on is Minutes, which ah. is uh, oh. uh, isn't that the critically acclaimed V. Video game yeah, minute that's, that everybody's got talking about right now. That's minute? actually heavily inspired by uh, classic God game series Black and White, um, and it only uses two colors. So how did you get involved in in Minute? Um, so the team, uh, shout out to the team, JW, Kitty, Yukio, and, and Dom. That's me. Um, we, we're all friends, uh, long-time friends. We, we met at games, events, and uh, have been hanging out. And uh, Minute came about from two prototypes that happened, one of them being Adventure Minute that uh, Kitty and JW uh, made for this Adventure Time game jam. And there was a school project of mine, which was a black and white uh, platformer about a cute character going to work and, and doing stuff. And uh, I remember that. Yeah, I remember it. And we ended up merging those projects because we thought each other's stuff was pretty cool, and we thought we should, we should make something new out of it. Yeah, my original concept for uh, our sit-down interview, I was hoping that we would play Minute together. Maybe, maybe we could do that some other time. But I was hoping that you would actually sit down and we would play it together. Because um, yeah, I we could do a little, uh, let's play a re remote uh, walkthrough slash experience thing. 
Yeah, we definitely have to do that later on because I still have to get the game. <laughs> so. William. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, William. No, no. <laughs> no. I'm still asleep. How woke are you? Dumb. Me? How woke are you? I had uh, like six shots of espresso today. I think I'm, I'm pretty okay. woke. Okay. I'm actually, uh, you, can, you can see this, I'm really, I'm really sweaty uh, because I put on sunscreen right before this. And I've got a really good sun angle going on, so I'm I'm just I'm just sweating lotion right now, and it's kind of kind of nice. Uh, but if you see me just doing this, it's because it's fucking I'm just sweating white <laughs> white thick liquid. Uh, that's what this is. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I'm pretty woke. Since we're talking about sleeping, I, I was curious, like, how bad is the jet lag from for? Berlin to the U.S. Like when you have to do a tour and come to U.S., like how messed up is that? That make your days and nights. Oh, it takes the piss. You gotta, you gotta go through the security after like eleven hours flight if you're going to L.A. or San Francisco, and then, and then there's the sun, there's the time shift, Palm there's trees. the staying awake for like twenty, twenty four hours. Alcohol. Ah. Oh. Then you gotta, then you gotta get to the hotel, and then the hotel people put you in the wrong room and they give you the wrong keys and the and it, and and when you get there, someone's in your room. It's it, it's not good. It's the opposite it's of not good. good. It's, it's bad. It's yeah. very, it sounds very bad. Very very bad. Um, yeah, but uh, the, I think the the first time I went to the U.S. Uh, the First night, we actually ended up going to a podcast recording. Which second night. Okay. Second night, uh, Ooh, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. When we first got there, we went to Denny's, I think, and we both just. Hated oh it. yeah, that was, we hated. We everything. just gave up on the first day, pretty much. Yeah, uh, but then the second day, that was kind of the real first day. That's uh, that's when wild shit started happening, and that's actually the day before we started working on the first accounting. Uh, so yeah, we were kind of. Just stumbling into the Rick and Morty offices, kind of hungover and kind of still buzzing from the happenings of last night. We went to a Harmontown recording, and um, it was wild. Hey. Shout out Denny's. They make really good eggs and waffles. So when you, you were about to jump into the accounting, did you already have your concept together? Or were you just basically like, oh, shit, let's just write something on the as quick as we can and... and meet with them or or did you just kind of work together on it we we had a few skype calls before we ended up heading out uh we knew we wanted to do the vr inside vr inside vr it seemed like something that justin would be particularly adept at writing and like it would also allow us to explore a bunch of different ideas in a short kind of game jammy way without you know taking too long to set up yeah i think we had we had tree world and the king room and an early version of the office working um, by the end of the first week after four days, I think. And that's what counts, making it fast. Yeah, you gotta be like, you gotta, you can't, you can't slow down. Was, Never there, slow. was there any levels that, that you actually almost completed that didn't make it into the game at all? Or was it just all, you know, kind of threw in there because it was put together? Pretty cool. Well, we had a couple ideas uh, kind of concepted out before we even started working on the game. Um, I think one of them we can give away uh, was a uh, you were playing as a very very bad bank robber, uh, taking taking someone hostage, and and everyone was kind of just taunting you because you were doing a really bad job robbing this bank. So uh, <laughs> you were just kind of standing there, you know, with the like like this, and everyone's looking at you and going, ha ha ha. You can never rob this bank, good. You're, you're, you're... fucking this up, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's that's kind of that was kind of the idea of that. Uh, we had a couple others. Um, I think there was something about doing a, a theater play on stage, and you had a I script. I had to improv it. And do yeah, it in front of an stuff. audience. But we we very early we figured out that we wanted to do a thing where you are just put into these weird situations that are like social have weird social dynamics or weird power dynamics are just are just uh, overwhelming. So everyone at that point was like, oh, VR is so new and we have to be careful not to 
be too loud or too aggressive with people. Uh, but that's we we pretty much went the opposite direction just yeah. because uh, we wanted to test the limits of what you can do with the human condition. <laughs> I think I think a lot of it was uh, every kind of VR game that had been out so far was kind of aggressively a tutorial. It was all very calm. And now look to the right and click and bring your controller up. See how it exists and moves in the same way that you move it. And and, and so we decided to go the other way where it's just like, okay, you've got pointers, you pull one thing to pick something up and, and, and then go for it. Um, and that was the original one, which came out in 2016. Correct. Was there any uh, other VR games that you played before you jumped into this game that kind of, you know, made you spatially aware of, of how it was going to actually work, a level inside of a level? I think for me, before accounting development, I literally only played Chill Brush, like once. And we got the hardware, and it was pretty much the first time we got our hands on that. And uh, we just did what was fun at the time. I managed to set something up in my room uh, back when I was in the UK, and I think I tried like, like I didn't. I, I played the job simulator demo, I think, and and like some other weird small ones, and uh, fantastic contraption. I played, and, and like nothing, nothing particularly struck out. Struck like struck me as like, oh, this is the experience I want to be having with this device. Cause you know, it's powerful. You can be like, oh wow, I can project like a huge landscape in front of me and it can be anything and you can make anything happen in, in it and have it be a somewhat visceral experience. And it just felt like everything was kind of like, oh yeah, this is interesting. I can make a shape or whatever. And then, but there wasn't anything with kind of real character or or, or uh, with, an intri with a voice that felt particularly compelling. I noticed the coolest part about accounting was the fact that the characters will follow you. If you're moving this way, they're staring right at you. It's like, like, we're, it's like you made a VR experience that's peering into your soul the entire time you play it. Like, there's no getting away from the eyes. You move this way, and Tree Guy's going to be, like, right up in your face. Like, so it, it was really cool that you added that because I didn't see that in a lot of other VR games at the time. Um, now it seems like it's something that they want to add, like a more um, hands-on, like, hey, if you're going to move. Because it used to do that in other games like Skyrim and, yeah. and things like that. You would that. be surprised that the amount of things we did that just felt natural to us or like, like, a, like a good idea. Uh, I think we... We nailed a bunch of things, and for the amount of research we did into actually making a VR game, we got pretty lucky with some of the stuff we did. And I think uh, it's it's become like one of the first introductory experiences for many players as a VR thing, and I think that's pretty cool. I think in terms of the research I did, it was basically like so many games were like, oh, we, we, we haven't got locomotion figured out right yet. Like it still makes like half the people still feel a bit sick and it feels woozy and not right in your head. And then, and then there was like, oh, you know, yeah, it was mostly movement stuff. And, and then I think, I think we figured like, okay, you can pick stuff up and down fine. And that's cool. That, that works fine. But like, if we can just kill movement or find a way to move through spaces, without having to move in a physical sense. Like we figured that would be uh, like, like you can do it, you can, that's like one limitation that you've got to stick to. And then it's like, okay, it's got to be in a space that doesn't move. And there's, it's got to be something that we can build in, 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 a, in Unity. And then it was just like, oh yeah, we can kind of maybe figure out. Then we had the idea of we, we got the like 2D face mm -hmm. idea and we're like oh this is a much easier way to animate characters quickly and expressively yeah and then we made a set of mouths and faces for for one character that kind of found its way through development like years after it's, it's really weird like the the amount of recycling we do as well it's a really uh, it's, it's kind of a punk game uh, but i think we we kind of managed to drag it out of that swamp a little bit and then kind of mm. soften the edges a little bit in some places. So it's a good game. Also, it's, it's uh, good. yeah, at some point we, I, think, I mean, it was just the three of us. And I think at this point, uh, mm -hmm. shout outs to 
our uh, collaborative partners at the, the Crows team, uh, who came on, uh, Tom came on, Alicia came on, mm -hmm. Jan came on, Sean helped a little bit probably. In the original as well. Roper yeah. helped. Yeah. Justin helped a little bit. Um, Tanya. Tanya, this is this is going into squanch territory, but uh, squanch tendo. Uh, I'm sorry, squanch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, squanch games. We can edit that out later. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, squanch games. Yeah, they uh, they they helped push it uh, over the finish line. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been a, it's been a wild ride. Yes. That that's an interesting question. Like, how many people were uh, involved in squanch games when you started on accounting? Um, was it just Justin, or did Justin already have a bunch of people in mind to, to kind of help out, or was a lot of a lot of it placed on crows? When we started on um, when we started on accounting, Squanch Tendo didn't exist at that point. Um, when we started talking, at least, and then Justin knew he, I I don't want to speak for him, but like he, I think I think over the course of that project. That's when it started. To, the pieces started to come together, and I think Tanya and Justin started working together. Um, Tanya Watson, producer, yeah. and then they kind of realized they have this at their yeah. disposal. So, uh, so one thing led to another, yeah. and uh, now we're in a seven-year contract. <laughs> Five more games. Five. <laughs> Five more games. Uh, um, I want to. Water because we have to stay hydrated because it's we're on the it's hot in the in the top, on the top floor of this building in a desert of concrete. earthquake. Oh. So, so, so I want to I want to uh, let's see let me see I want to switch gears for a second uh, because I want to talk about something. William, let's let's throw this on the screen. A few years ago, <laughs> you were. <laughs> You were Gore a, warning, holy shit. You were um, basically hit by a car. Uh, so I was I was interested in getting more information about that because that seems like a horrific experience. But uh, but I definitely want to jump into that and talk about it. And I've got a funny video to, here to show show the world if they haven't seen it on your Twitter page. <laughs> Again, without any warning whatsoever. <laughs> I fine. Like it's like I, I'm like I have to look at it for like like nine nine ten months. So I'm not particularly. Yeah. Are you are you showing the video of me on the floor? Yeah, I was thinking about showing that video, but I wanted to get approval first. I should have probably got approval before I threw up uh, <laughs> your um, X-rays, but but I, I mean, uh, it's interesting because you don't see many people just get hit by a car and make such a joke about it like you did. Like it should it should be a traumatic experience, but you make it so entertaining that it's like I'm gonna go get hit by a car and break my leg so I can make this cool viral video. Yeah. <laughs> Told you had right, yeah. like okay, oh shit! Can... More people should experience okay, this. Okay, I'll set I'll set the clip up and then and then and then you can play it. So, can I go pee real quick? Yeah, go for okay. it. This is just gonna be. <laughs> I knew Dominic was gonna pee before we made it out of here. Okay, so um, so I was out running uh out on the out on the tops, the moors, the hillside of uh, of where I where my parents live and where I've grown up in in Yorkshire in West Yorkshire. And um, and and I, I was out running, and then I got hit by this car. And so at this point, like I um, I, I I flipped over the car. I um, content warning, by the way, if anyone's been hit by a car and gets freaked out by vivid descriptions, just just mute mute now if you, if it <laughs> if it freaked you out. But um, so I, I flipped over, and my leg was pointing the wrong way. And I was like, ah, oh. I, I, my initial feeling was just like, ah, oh, I've got to deal with this now. Oh, I've got to go to the hospital. Oh, I can't. And then I'm like, oh, okay. And I managed to get myself back round into a good position. And then, uh, at, then the guy got out of his car. He was like, hey, dude, are you all right? And I'm like, ah, oh, right. okay. Uh, and he was, he started freaking out. And so eventually, more people came. And at this point, I've been on the floor for about an hour, and I'd broken my bone in about three places. There was one big chunk that just that was free floating, and uh, so this video uh, is when it's getting when the bones the 
then the ambulance has arrived and they're fiddling with my bones. And, uh, and I gotta see this. <laughs> and uh, and to to get through it, uh, I was doing. I was. It was very painful. Uh, didn't have any painkillers, so uh, I was doing. Uh, Robert Barath. Well, I had paracetamol, but that's like fucking nothing. So I, I was doing Robert Baratheon from Game of Thrones. And so now, now if you play the clip, you'll, you'll see, you'll see. Uh, I'm, I'm just curious, like, like where were you at the point of like programming your games and stuff? Like, like was there a point where you're just like, oh, my game development career is over. How am I going to play a VR game without being able to stand up? Well, it was a pain in the ass because I just got back from uh, the jam with Justin and Dom in LA. I, I'd been back for like maybe a week or something after GDC. So I, so we were in the middle of development of accounting basically, and I was out. I was out of work. Like I, I was in the hospital for two weeks after this, and I was having uh, a bunch of loads of surgeries done on my leg. So uh, I. I I was in a I, I was in I was bed bound for about a month, and then I then I started to you know get to use a wheel I could use a wheelchair and, and some crutches and so I so I could hop around and, and do VR I, I I had the old dev kit one of the of the Vive and so I was hopping around while 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 doing builds trying to trying to push it along, uh, but yeah. So Dominic, you've returned just in time. So let's let's take a look at this. This this should be the outtakes of the accident. Imagine me eating popcorn. <laughs> Damn it, Ned! Oh, do you remember the rebellion back in the days? Fighting against the Mad King. Oh, Bessie. Right, it's going to be straightened up now, okay? Oh, Bessie! Bessie! Oh, Bessie. oh yes! Yes! Ah! Oh, damn it! Damn it, Ned! I, 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 hate, I hate to laugh, but like just your outtakes of this, the whole experience. Like, why, why were they giving you oxygen at the time? Like that's that's not something they do in America. America, they just take your leg and put it in a in a like a big like, like cooler and then pack it off. And they're like, here we go. We'll put your leg back on later. They would never give you oxygen in America. Man, um, it makes you high, right? Yeah. So that's one part yeah, of it. Yeah. And then ah, I think maybe ah. also uh, reduces blood flow. I think that. Could no, be... it, it, what it what it, it it's um it's laughing gas essentially, yeah. uh, which is it's a kind of pain relief. <laughs> Uh, that works for about maybe five seconds after you take a drag. So you've got to be dragging on it while they're while they're while they're doing shit. It's hardcore. It's like um, it's 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 properly like uh, man. Yeah, it's, I hope uh, I hope this video doesn't get flagged for having gore or something. Yeah, probably. Uh, <laughs> well, but, it, but yeah, it didn't look real, so. So maybe they won't won't flag it, but if they do flag it, we can edit it out later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the laughing gas—that's how you get. That's how you become funny. Yeah. So I wasn't actually funny until I had that. Um. Until I had that laughing gas, man. You aren't funny um, until you inhale. But you're only funny for five seconds. <laughs> yeah. You have the laughing but then it's gas. really funny. You gotta. Yeah. You gotta. You gotta just keep dragging on it. Yeah. So. And, uh, so and I was shouting yeah. to you. And you're like, okay, okay. Yeah. So your love of uh, Game of Thrones, did that have any influence over the uh, the Game Awards trailer? Like, who who put that together? Like, it was a team effort or... Because let's... The game, let's see. Uh, the Game Awards... This is, this is jumping about. The Game Awards trailer was... Basically a different project for us because we, you, you know, this is the... This is the... We'll probably hear in the audio. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm turning it off. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, we can. Uh, we can. So, we can talk this is over so. This is so fast. Like, um, there's so many cuts to this. Yeah, these are the first impressions of some of the new content. Uh, we have the biggest fan character there in the middle. Like, this is all edit. This is all hand edited by you. Yeah, I, well. I, I did the edit and the the capturing of the of the uh, footage. Uh, Jan 
made the, um, the the 3D scene and animation for the intro bit, like the Skyrim looking stuff. Um, uh, but yeah, basically that was the, the same process of me just doodling like a, a little diorama. And then we uh, we made a little storyboard for this. That's kind of how we how we do all the video content nowadays. Is we we kind of sketch it out in a in a storyboard animatic and then do the real deal. Greatness awaits. Greatness. <laughs> Play PlayStation VR. Um, I like the Game of Thrones shit. Like Robert Baratheon's a uh, a constantly. He's 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 always he's always funny. Uh, he's always a, he's always a good guy. Mark Addy, Mark Addy, getting getting one of our games. But I uh, think we had Robert Grath in in Langerskov yeah, as well. Like my, that's, it's a it's a very my, long last. My time. Twitter box. If you go to at damn it Ned, you can check out a really good Robert Baratheon Twitter bot, which is written personally by me, and and a bit of help from Joe Feingold. Quite a lot of help from Joe Feingold, bit of help from Dom. It's, it's all, you know, it's a team effort, you know. But uh, but I will take credit for, for, for this one. So what what kind of stuff do you guys do when you're not doing the games? Like like favorite shows or, or favorite games? Like are you still playing the classics? Or are you playing new games? Or you don't have time for games, uh, TV shows? Because I, I did notice uh, on the Discord, which is a plug, everybody go to the Discord. The link's in the bottom. Come join. <laughs> Discord.g slash crows. But I, but I see you guys have uh, been into Waterworld recently, so we won't give out any spoilers, or will we? But, like, what what else do you guys like to do, like, when you're not making games? Um, I like to... I like to go for walks in the woods and walks where any trees are. After I moved to Berlin about... I, I, you know, I, I moved to Berlin sometime last year, July, uh, and right? and I can't. I I think it was you in July, and then me in. Uh, yeah, I totally can't recall. All of a sudden, it was sometime. <laughs> it was sometime it between. Was sometime. I I was in the process of moving. I've got to. I've got to. Right I've got to register. I got to. I've got to do my paperwork. But um. But yeah, uh, so I so I, I miss um, I, I miss I miss the trees and the, and wildlife and nature a bit, and uh, so I quite like whenever I've got a bit of time uh, with my good friend Joe, and sometimes you know you know different people from the team come and hang out, and um, yeah, just walking around, seeing leaves, seeing bits of wood, you know, birds occasionally. Saw a boar last time I was in a in a in in, in a wood. Last time I saw a boar was actually uh, a good segue at the gym, uh, uh, because the, the was just massive, massive hairy dude. Um, so that's what I like to do. Shout out Tom uh, and Jan, gym partners, the German Alliance. Uh, we like to go uh, and, and, and lift weights sometimes. I'm not that strong. But oh, dudes, shut up. I, I train the underground he's fucking, muscles. He's fucking strong. He's this dude's strong. You're stronger than anyone. I walked know. all the way up to this floor of the building. So. I take the elevator. Yeah. I, can't, I can't be asked with that shit. That's kind of the only thing where uh, that, that kind of is the difference between us is I walk. <laughs> Dom's sporty, and I'm more the I'm more the the. the Still silent type. The muscle and the brain. Well, that the that brain. was actually really cute. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think um You told me you told me how to do like a hockey fucking a hockey Oh style. yeah, the the little um you have to the trick is to kind of push through the person and not like you don't wanna have the point of impact be be kind of here, but it's you kind of actually just wanna same thing with punching someone. If you want to punch real good, you punch through. That's that's kind of the, the only advice <laughs> I can give uh, for that. But please don't. Uh, violence is bad. Uh, only only do it when you really have to or want to, be, because you think that's uh, the good thing to do. Um, I remember I, I saw you do it, and I was like, oh man, that looks that looks like whoa. That, I I was like I was interested to see if I could like stand it uh, and like 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 keep my center of balance. 
and I was and and you were like and I was, and but at the last moment I was like uh, do a half strength one just to test the ground. He does like a half strength one, and I fought I fought I like I, I stumbled backwards like it's you used to do a lot of hockey. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, that's actually uh, I, I used to play ice hockey and skater hockey, and that's still like whenever I get the chance I, I go to the the ice rink. That's actually so I live over there, um, <laughs> roughly like a kilometer. Can we show this? Yeah. Dude, let's just get this on the move. Yeah, let's so this, this is the Berlin skyline. Yeah, actually. Beautiful view. Take you outside. Does the Wi-Fi reach that? Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll be all right. Okay. We're going on an adventure. See, what other podcast has this? You know? See, yeah. see what, what this show has done for everybody? They get to see the beautiful landscapes of Berlin now. See, no other podcast has this. So, yeah, I, I, I actually... I live over there, like a kilometer, and, that, and that's an ice rink, uh, kind of. What color kind building? Of that way, uh, you you can't really see it. It's it's oh. kind of hidden in the in the nooks and crannies of the, of the lay of the land. Uh, wait, that's that's a little ch church over there, um, and and just just one station from here is where we work. I think that's all we can show. Let's let's get on here. Okay. Relocating, I see. Yeah. So but now outside. So I got a funny game for you, Dom. Uh, if if the uh, YouTube audience wants to play, um, so you you voiced the biggest fan in Accounting Plus, right? That's true. So I was hoping that if we can get the uh, audience interacting, if they could give the biggest fan a phrase to say, and then uh. I will throw up the biggest fan here, and while the picture is up, you could say the things that the audience is requesting for you to say. So it'll kind of be like a little, little play area for everybody. If anybody actually, actually says anything there. <laughs> um, yeah, the, I should I should I just read from the chat? Is that all right? That'll that'll definitely work. Or yeah, I'll, I'll get the chat real quick. Or or to make it even even funner, just grab the Discord and we'll. We'll field some it's stuff from the audience. Us. It's just gonna be us right now. Oh wait, he's back. He's back. Don't say nothing bad about him. He'll he'll know. Can you stop talking shit, man? <laughs> uh. Okay. What do what do we got? Uh, is, is there any any request for biggest fan dialogue? Uh, we could also do the Rick and Morty voices if you're if you feel more like obviously we are the voice actors. Morty. <laughs> Uh, oh, jeez, Rick, I don't, I don't know if that's such a good idea, man. Morty, we've got to do seven more seasons, Morty. Oh, that's more than six, but not quite eight. We're going to be like The Simpsons, Morty. <clears throat> remember, remember when people thought The Simpsons were good? That's going to be us right now. Oh, Morty. they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna paint me yellow, dude. Rick, yeah. uh, does Morty even say dude? I, I, I Who keep, cares? Uh, yeah. Um, Who cares? Was that enough time to... Uh, Oh, can, can you say, why are you so quiet, Tree Guy? All right. Go for it. <laughs> why are you so quiet, Tree Guy? I want you to talk to me. Talk to me! <laughs> That's the only line we have. Um, no one's else. No, 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 no one else is suggesting anything. Oh, it's all just... Uh, you cut to the wrong frames, and I've lost you. Where'd you go? Oh, there you are. Uh, that's why everyone makes mistakes. It's it's a first episode. It's live. Total many yeah. think it happened. I'll, I'll keep an eye on the chat if, if we want to do, uh, yeah, but, you know. You know. Um, I, I saw another interesting question about Accounting Plus, actually, uh, which was, uh, let me let me give proper, proper credit. Um... Fuck. That was some someone had, had a question about the art style. Uh, sorry, person who posted that. Um, but it, the the question was essentially: um, Has has have the VR limitations influenced the art style, like the design of this, That's and in, in what ways? Which is a really fucking good question. It was so it we was, should. Ask it was sort of similar to what I asked earlier. Like, did any of the games kind of influence your game? But uh, we'll answer it their way. Thanks. Much better posed question. <laughs> but, uh, uh, what do you think influenced the uh, design in terms of limitations? Not wanting 
to spend time or money. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff from the asset store. We reused a bunch of um, of things from previous projects. We uh, we didn't animate characters' faces in 3D, which was nice. We had a tool that allowed us to generate the phonemes of uh, voice of voice clips automatically, so we could have uh, characters be animated. Uh, in, in, in 2D, which was a lot less work than like molding everything and animating stuff. It was also a allowed Don to better express himself uh, through the medium of 2D, which he is a pro at. Yeah, so the last thing we made before that was Dr. Langerskov, which uh, for those who played it, you know that everything's kind of got this outline style and uh, it was just very meticulous in detail and you had to go into literally every model and draw outlines across every UV edge and it's just a pain in the ass so for accounting we kind of threw that overboard and decided to go with a more uh not like flat uh cartoon style but no no outlines and stuff but the 2d aspect is still very much part of it like you have the you have little faces and stuff and papers scattered around and uh just you know keeping keeping the 2d and 3d i, I think it's a very close thing to do yeah. at this point um yeah i come from a 2d background uh, like in 2D animation and illustration so uh, I'm Langescope was actually the first thing I worked on that's 3D uh, and, and that's why we had, a, we had a live crow right there um, and that's yeah that's that's why it kind of keeps keeps finding its way into the project looks like we have another request uh, looks like somebody's wanting you to say I'm pickle Rick <laughs> I'm Pickle Rick! Oh, sorry. <laughs> you wanna play with my Pickle Rick? Oh, <laughs> I got that on a t shirt. Oh, Justin Ryland. Justin Ryland. Uh, seven seasons of Rick and Roy. That was the line, right? <laughs> That was that was amazing. May <laughs> Stay with me forever. I on say forever. <sighs> this expression is very much just <sighs> I'm not blinking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. People will get freaked out. <laughs> Um, but yeah, little little known fact, we're also actually other voices in the game. William here is uh, is the. I'm Clovis. Hello. Uh, I'm I'm accounts. I'm the accountant A or accountant one. Hello. Uh, I'm I'm um <laughs> I'm 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 definitely I'm definitely another one somewhere. You're a dark serious in the ritual. Hello. Now. So it's the whole range. It's. Hello. Oh wait, for Clovis and Doc Sirius are just a gravel modulation. Yeah. Hello. I'm Doc Sirius. And I can offer you so many souls. Tens of thousands of souls. I'm also Background accountant. Yeah, you gotta put it in the thing. <laughs> and uh, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> and it's just, it's just finding that 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 uh, note where the voice breaks. And then you just, I don't know. I don't have that. You see. And uh, and voice. and also, uh, I'm I'm in a in a metal band called Slorn, which is featured in parts of the game. Either visually or uh, in, in sound, and that's in the in the ritual level as well, which sounds which is just. It always, to me, it always sounds like you're screaming. Radio Four. <laughs> it's uh, I should write up the lyrics sometime. It's about a person who makes an eBay account and buys dark stuff like Lord of the Rings posters, um, and you know, cool stuff Bell because Rose. they're. Bell, yeah, I know, I know, I know names from Lord of the Rings. I think is a line in there, uh, which yeah, if you do, props. Galadriel. Uh, Gimli, 
Dumbledore. Harry Potter. Snake. So um, Indiana Jones. Uh, Big Papa. Peter Jackson. Michael Jackson. Little Slinky. Michael Bay. Boom. Blows up. Potato head. Ringy the ring. <laughs> <laughs> the ring is the most important character of the whole movie. Poor ring. Yeah, they actually, um, you, if, you, if you have the DVD extended version, you can actually turn on the voice track for Ringy. Um, so whenever Ringy is on screen, you'll hear like a, it's kind of like a, oh, put me on, please. Put me on your finger. I'm going to make you invisible to the uh, naked eye. He gets really excited in that scene where it's like. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, it's good. It's good. I, I can see why they removed that track, but um, that's a little, it's worth getting the DVD box. Peter there. Jackson is a visionary. When I saw Hobbit 3, I thought, I, I don't know what he's doing, but I, I, I could see myself liking this. You know, that's, that's how I, that's how I felt when I, when I saw, um, when I saw the Hobbit number, the third Hobbit, I the could, third I, Hobbit. I, yeah, I was like, you know, I could see myself liking this. You know, mm. I, that's how I was, you know, I swear. No, for real. Like was, when, I, I was, when I was watching Hobbit number three, the third Hobbit, Hobbit three, and and Peter Jackson started putting those shots together. I thought I could see myself liking this, you know, Hobbit number three. You can quote me on that. Yeah. Just kidding, uh, I don't want to I, I watched, I think, the first Hobbit on, on a plane back from uh, GDC. So it was the, the intercontinental flight. Um, and I kind of, I, I was at the point of just barely falling asleep, but also the rattling was just enough to keep me awake. So I kind of watched it like this. Oh, okay. That's... More dwarves. Um, I, I was trying to reach. They're going and I was trying to reach something while he was watching it. Yeah, barrels. You know, classic Lord of the Rings barrels uh, and things like that. Um, but yeah, to to get back to your question from ten stick. minutes ago, uh, we uh, we do enjoy TV series and and, uh, and other commercial products and such. Um, I think I'm, I'm coming from more of a animation angle, whereas William is, is into theater, acting, the human soul, <clears throat> and, and that sort of thing. Um, sticks. sticks. That's a nice stick. Yeah. It came uh, with the place. It came with the apartment. Nice. I didn't find that. Free stick. Uh, I'm gonna leave it when I get out of here. But uh, yeah. you need to take it with you. I mean, it's it's a free stick. It was it was left there for you for a purpose. It means something. Okay. Here's a question: uh, Do you guys ever worry about running out of ideas for your project, or or your project not living up to your own expectations? With so many amazing titles on the belt, it's quite a pressure. Or do you just not care at all? I'd like it. Maybe we could both answer that. Yeah. Do you wanna? You we should go first. I I am. Um, I should go first. Worry about running out of ideas. Um, you go first. Uh, I, I I never worry about running out of ideas. I think um, I think uh, you. A thing I've tried to stay true to, but I've I've not always, is always putting all of your ideas in the project you're currently making. Like if you well like if you've got like there's a asterisks on that. Uh, if you've got an idea for a project, like um, say say we're making like a we're making a racing game, and I've got a really good idea for a racing game, but I'm like, uh, I'll save this yeah. for the racing game I'm gonna make after this racing game. Like, I I try and never ever do that, and always try and be putting all the current all because the thing is, you're always gonna have more ideas. Everyone know like we're in an idea rich marketplace like everyone's got an idea for a game um everyone's got like i did you know even even if you, even if i run out of ideas people i'm working with and people i'd collaborate with will have ideas and like you can always work you can always find stuff like there's always an abundance of, 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 of things yeah. like that do you want to uh hit that yeah one? to bounce off that uh I, I like to say the truth which is ideas are cheap uh, and you, you can always have more, and uh, being precious about them 
you know, there's, there's people who work on a single project for six years, and then it turns out, you know, it, it, they didn't strike gold the first time around. Uh, I think I think it's it's okay to have lots of different ideas and and try things, and then I, I'd rather like try six things, and one of them is really good, and five of them, you know, don't work. So that's kind of the thing. Like quality, I I think none of us. Our, we're, we're not, never not 100%. Up to your own expectations. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm thinking we probably never think this game is 100% exactly how we wanted it to be. It's, you're never going to be fine with all of it as a, as a product. Like this, Specifically as a developer, you're always going to see the, the super obvious flaws and everything. And uh, you just kind of have to... Uh, be okay with the fact that it's out there now and it's it is what it is and you can I think one part of it is just aiming really high so that you kind of end up somewhere that's kind of high um, and then uh, yeah about, about ideas I, I, I have a notebook that has different ideas that can pretty much be extracted for anything so it's not like they're attached to a certain project it's like oh this is a funny thing this is a cool character this is a little joke we can use uh, and then it's just about finding f places to put that. And I think often uh, we work the best if something is a very spontaneous idea and we, we feel it in the moment. So uh, part of it is also just being around people who inspire you a lot um, and, you know, sucking sucking up all of their energy and it grows into, into this weird tornado. And then hopefully uh, if we're with the tornado metaphor, like hopefully like a cow or like a little car will come flying out of that and you'll be like, oh yeah, we're putting that in the game. Yeah. I think, I think in terms of expectations and I, I've never, I've never worried too much about it. I think like I've, Langeskov was kind of small enough for me not to feel the pressure of like, oh, this is the first thing since Stanley Parable. Yeah. Like I, there's never been, and then we went on to, then there was Temple of No and then Accounting. And like none of them have felt like a kind of, none of them have felt like Stanley in terms of what it was like to work on that or what it was like to release that. And but I think I think I guess if there was one idea or one way of looking at it that I had to that I I want to I want to preserve or pass on to people is um, rather than thinking about any get the game that you're working on right now being the sum of your being the sum of all of you, yourself and your creative work and everything you can give, rather than seeing it in that way, think about it in terms of this is going to be part of, this is going to be one of the multiple games that I'm going to release. So this is going to be, this is one part of myself, or this is one part of the creative force that I can bring in life or whatever. Because I think, I think with the games, specifically made by small teams or even big teams you can fall into a trap of like seeing yourself in the thing that you're making to the point where like you're making becomes a statement on yourself and i think like that ki that kind of pressure is unhelpful and i think i think um i think that makes you a, it, it makes you a worse person to collaborate with i think and that's like I think that's the thing that I, I think about a lot is like um, the sum of my career has been the collaborations that I've I the people I've worked with and probably like the largest but the person who shares the most with me on that and the person who uh, has influenced me the most in terms of the working process and, and those things has been this guy. Yes. It's, so, uh, yes. it's been like four years now, right? Since, yeah. since we started a whole a whole uh, a whole president term worth of projects it's it's been it's been like a it's been a whole president it's been it's been four percent of a century man <laughs> that's good math you didn't even have to get mike involved for that about one the word for that. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I agree with all of that, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of always good to not focus on, like, don't be future tripping too much, focus on the next thing, but to know that there is going to be something after what you do now. So, like, put all you can into this thing, but it's not going to be the definitive thing that yeah. you're going to be 
uh, Judge Forever on, unless you're Toby Fox. When the day, when the when the final day of work comes on your project or whatever, that's not the final day of your life, basically. Yeah. So try and try and like I I do my best <clears throat> to try and see beyond. It, it's like hard sometimes because there is there is a degree of pressure and there is a feeling like, okay, I've got to be bringing my best stuff because people are paying attention and like people are playing it. So, so to piggyback off that, we we had a question earlier where somebody asked what it was like to uh, work on a Stanley Parable. So just to kind of maybe add on that, like, did you feel those pressures to make a better game after that, and what was it like, kind of distancing yourself um, from someone you partnered with on the game, like? At the time, did you feel like uh, you two were going to be a pair in making the game before Crows, Crows, Crows? Or did you kind of figure it would be kind of a one-time experience and then it, it'll let you do your own thing? Are you sorry, are you talking about Stanley Parable or yeah. Crows? Or? Yeah, the Stanley Parable. Okay. Um, we had a question right. earlier about what it was like to work on that. And I just want to kind of add to it to, to see what you felt like. Did you feel enormous pressure afterwards? Or is, was there a reason why you I, I, wanted to distance yourself? and? <laughs> Did you see that? What was that? <laughs> uh, um, no. no. Uh, I, I, um, That's a good question. After, after Stanley, after Stanley Parable came out, my my life was just flipped upside down. I don't think I was really thinking about the next thing I was going to work on. I was mostly just thinking about how the shape of my life had mostly transformed, uh, in terms of in terms of. Uh, in terms of it, it was a it was a life defining event. It was a it was an important thing that happened in my life. I'd spent two years working on it, which you know doesn't seem too long. I've spent four years working on crows or working in this kind of environment, and that's like twice as much. Uh, it's like two Stanley Parables essentially, and I think it's been worth it. Like I think I well no, it's it's definitely been worth it. I think um I think I think um. I think the I never kind of felt a pressure for a follow up. I think I mostly felt a pressure to figure out what the fuck I was doing, um, because it felt like um, like with the game being successful, it felt like you can't like just. I didn't feel like it was. I, I didn't feel like I wanted to be like, okay, I'm checking out now and I'm opening an investment account and I'm just going to live off that for the rest of my life, which kind of would have been possible. Um, uh, so so after, after that came out and Davey started working on the beginner's guide, um, uh, I, w I felt like I didn't, that project didn't make a lot of sense for me because it was still in the source engine. And it, but it, it was very much within kind of my comfort zone. It would have been the same main creative partnership. It would have been the same engine. It would have been the same kind of style of game to a degree. And it also felt like it was very, Davy's voice had a kind of primacy in that, that made me feel like that would have been a hard project to, at the end of the day, feel like I could have contributed to in a way that made would would have made me feel good as like an individual like it's it's like um yeah it feels like a very um like nothing against davy and his motivation on this but it feels like a very specifically his yeah yeah a very personal thing where it almost feels like collaborating on this would would mean not kind of entering someone's zone too much and not getting like your, your own voice necessarily it felt, yeah and whereas with crows i think it's it's always like you can see everyone every, every individual person's influence in anything in, in there like there's there's stuff that you can definitely trace back to a person or like a person's idea that they that that wouldn't be in there without them and that's the kind of cool thing you know that yeah. that kind of segues into a really good point um i mean what you guys did was take the influence of a Discord group and a group of fans and completely build a whole level around them. Like, how do how do you just have a, a team meeting and be like, hey, you see what they're doing in this Discord? Let's build a whole level around it. Like, and it was quick. It was just as, as fast as 
you know, before we knew it, there was a whole level built around, you know, the fans. So, like, where was the creative process involved in that? Like, how did you just all get together and be like, let's just build something, you know, yeah. completely for the fans? I think in a weird, magical way, the, the Discord community, which, which was a super new thing at that point, kind of entered in, like, be, be stepped into that collaborative role in a, in a way. You know, there was definitely a back and forth, like, yeah. here are these theories about the game, uh, and we, we could, like, you people, you have so much to work with, and, and, and it was really, it felt really natural to kind of have the game respond to that in a, in a weird way, and that's something that hasn't really been done anywhere before, so that was something that we thought, yeah, let's, let's just try it. Yeah, it t I think it took about, um, it took about two weeks for us to amass everything in terms of the level and then maybe about another week to do all the marketing related stuff and uh, the trailer and, and everything so so it, it wasn't a huge time investment in terms of in terms of like the studio schedule and uh, accounting was out it was doing well and and uh, of course of course from the larger studio perspective, um, everything's been planned. We, we're self-funded. We were uh, the studio is self-funded. We got paid to do the accounting port by Sony, um, and and uh, they've got and and they recoup their money that they invested, and then we start to get paid as the developers. And so we were like, okay, well, if we push that, we see the games doing well. If we keep pushing this, um, if we if we push this this out and we and we we uh, we keep the game moving along and we show that we want to support it and keep expanding to it uh, and and the fact that it was a game that we'd already taken to ship so it's you're working in a in your comfort zone already yeah. like it's like we just came from oh fuck we've got to do like six new rooms uh and, and 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 take the whole game to PSVR and rework all of it and optimize it and do all of that. And by the end of the process, it's like, oh yeah, we can make a new room now in in such a short time yeah. that it, it feels like a, a good space to create in and a space that you can feel comfortable creating in and a space where specifically accounting, it feels like you can take creative risks in there and like you can do something that's kind of off center or off or, or out to the left, or just weird, or, or, or and, yeah, and, and, it's, and it feels really natural at some point. You have you develop this tool, and you can just use that again and again. And I mean, on a day like this, it really feels like you could just walk into the office and come up with some new ideas for accounting. You know, like mm -hmm. like that. That's just a thing that could happen any any day. Uh, and uh, that yeah, that's that's just a cool thing. Uh, it's. It makes new projects scarier because you have to start from from scratch, pretty much. Yeah. You know, some stuff. Uh, so it's it's weird what? to kind of uh, like what's the visual angle on this? Like, what's the writing like? Who are we making this for? With accounting, we we had a very clear idea of we just want to annoy people who play VR. We want to make fun of VR, but we also just want to make a game that's genuinely cool in VR. Um, How do you do all three of those things at once? And uh, we we kind of did. I think, uh, but now it's 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 like what's the what's I, the next thing? I saw a really good question for you, uh, Dom. Do you have any advice on creating your own unique art style? I feel like I'm just copying the artist's out. Like, and Dan said that he's Dan. already copied your name two letters out. <laughs> Dan, yeah, we're doing it I'm exactly. Gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be right back. Yeah, cool. Uh, this is a really good question, and I think we can we can. Uh, Change the pace a little bit and just like if people, we can we can do rapid questions. I think we've been rambling a lot, yeah. uh, but to get back to the art style thing, um, copying from people you like, that's pretty much it already. Uh, it's that that's how how I uh, of stuff. like you. It's not like you trace things, but you you develop a, a, a sense of this is how someone solved the design problem. Like if you look at. Your favorite artists uh, and then their work, and you find all these little shortcuts that they use, or like a really cool way to draw, you know, like a bridge or whatever, and some object or like some some sort of shading, and you you just steal techniques here and there. Um, stealing is great, man. Uh, I I do it all the time. Obviously, um, ha kind of the key to it is also just having good taste, kind of honing that. 
So I try to look at things I like and figure out why I like them. And I, it's it's a very brainy process where you kind of have to figure out what are the rules that make up this style, for example, dissect that, uh, and then try and use those approaches for yourself. So, so uh, you can be like, oh, this cartoon here never really details anything unless it's super necessary. Maybe, maybe I can use that for myself. So it's less about copying the superficial appearance of something and more about copying the framework of what makes up the rules of something which is a product of these very strict rules that you put on yourself sometimes it's annoying and sometimes it's like oh shit we have to make it in VR and that seems annoying but that this these limitations and the limitations you set for yourself that's what creates that in my opinion I hope that answers it and just in time, uh, I'm back with Vasa. Uh oh, I'm Vasa, bitte. <laughs> okay, if we're all done uh, wrestling with our microphones, do we have more questions? It was a battle with the microphone. Yeah. Oh, are you putting your mask back on? Oh, is it No. Oh, okay, it's just classic uh, bandit frog. Bandit frog. Bite a cactus or eat a cockroach. I was actually actually gonna wear this for uh, Doctor Lang, whatever the hell the name of that <laughs> dude is, but I was gonna use this mask to play that game live with some people. But you know, I still haven't made it to play it. I'm probably the oh. one member in Discord that still uh -huh. hasn't played the game. That's pretty good stuff. I'm 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 fist banging. Here's I'm a not, question from fist. David. <laughs> Are you guys happy? Pretty deep. You know, I, I I think that question was asked right about when uh, William started getting into the Stanley Parable because it started to feel like it was taking a dark twist, and like it was, was it was a heartbreaking here, conversation. <laughs> oh yeah, I made so much money and got to open my own studio. It was so miserable. <laughs> with people who were amazing and fucking really talented and learned. And and I and and yeah, it's horrible. It's so dark. It's depressing. To 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 experience all the really cool things and to work with all the really cool people. Yeah, uh, I I think to answer this, uh, there's like there's so much stuff that we we can be happy about, you know, like we really built something really cool here and we have this great community, and all these great projects that we work on. Uh, that doesn't, like, achieving that doesn't mean that you don't have to deal with the tax man, all the cops. You still gotta go pick up groceries. And you still have to buy groceries, like a regular old person, like it's, life's go, life goes on like that yeah. and, and your problems just, kind of no matter how cool things get, they just scale up. I don't know. Uh, I think happy. Life, life here. Uh, we we get to miss years of being on, on Skype drop offs, yeah. and uh, so that's that's the thing uh, I, I really appreciate. And uh, you know, like secret to happy to be here. <laughs> that's so true. Yeah, I think I um I think like I definitely have. Days. And like I have the good days, it's a, it's 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 a texture. It's different. Every every day is different. Um, I've like um, and some of the and 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 um, it's always going to be a percentage. You know, it's, yeah. it's you never. It's it's like with making the perfect video game, unless it's Doctor Langoscope, you're never going to achieve the hundred percent mark where it's just the perfect little nugget and it's gold and that's all it is. You know, life's like that. Shit's gonna happen, uh, and it's about you know finding finding uh, that that positive high frequency. Uh, and sometimes you just have to drag yourself out of it. And uh, like depression, anxiety, that's something that's, that's going on for a lot of us. And uh, many many creative people. It's, it's something that you have to work with. So, uh, for all, yeah, man. I think yeah, it, it it it's hard. It's it's a confusing feeling 
um, to to be in a position of, of of having a lot of privilege and and having a lot of a lot of resources and like the problems like the problems like I'd have when I was like sixteen will be like oh I, I can't afford this I can't afford like a, a game that I want or like I well, I've got a I've got a I've got to walk all the way. I've got to walk all the way home, and like that's like from from college, or like from like oh man, I I, I left my you know I, I yeah those kind of problems. And now and now my problems are like, oh, did I spend this day right? Am I am I using my time in a good way? Am I thinking about things in a in a in a way that like is a is a good way to think about like it? Everything becomes more meta and. It, it becomes harder to point at something and be like, that's making me unhappy. Yeah. And it's harder, it's harder to kind of, you've got to do a lot more work to check in with yourself and to, to understand, like, to understand yourself and the people that you're surrounded with. And this is a rambling question. Uh, yeah, next I'm question. A, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. We're, we're happy. happy. All yeah, good. We're, we're, we're good. Question from, is it Joao? I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, Joao Silva, are you Portuguese? Probably right, or like we'll find out, we'll in, find about out in about thirty seconds. When it is. Anyway, question is: It feels like you guys bounce off each other a lot. Any advice for someone trying to make a funny game alone and finding your own style in that? What I think, think, I think that's for me that I think I think that's really difficult. I think I think um, I think so much the majority of what I do. By about like 75, 80 percent is stuff that bounce, that involves like a a bounce between somebody in the team and like uh, oh come on I'm no puppet I'm not a puppet um so 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 um fuck what was the question uh, making a making a, a funny game alone yeah. yeah so much of what I do involves bouncing off people and talking to people and, and like having disciplines like visual writing audio bouncing together to kind of make make a make a style that is interesting and, and come together and clash and produce these collisions and those ideas bouncing bouncing off each other and molding together yeah um for yourself i guess it's just like aim small look scale down if you're working by yourself you have to do absolutely everything as a point of reference the uh the production team on crows is uh about, about usually about four or five people uh working in programming slash art slash level design slash 3d art there's we've got a producer we've got a marketing director we've got um it's, it's, it's like a lot of people look at our games like, oh, Dr. Langdiskov or, or, accounting, or accounting, and they say, oh man, these games are pretty small. So take the size of one of those games and divide it by like, divide it again by, um, yeah. by like two or three or four. And then you're approaching a size that is kind of achievable. Uh, also, it's never really about the size. It's about the way that you use it. Um, no, but um, making making a funny game specifically, I think um, many times in life there will be an idea or like a concept or like a character or whatever that you think is really fucking fun, and that's good in its own right. But the the trick to collaborating on a thing like this is you have to sell the the, the fun in that to someone else, and I think that's where it gets hard. Like if the the idea kind of has to trickle down through all the filters and then if it's still a funny thing and if you manage to pitch it in exactly the right way and word it right and put it in the game correctly so that it works in the same way tickles the same nerve for other people it's about transferring that stuff and kind of uh, like developing your taste in a way where you can say this is why that's funny and it's not like um, same thing I said about the art style, like stealing a joke uh, verbally is, is, is one thing, but then figuring out why that's funny and being able to do it. Yeah, playing the process again. That's, that's, I, I think that's the one that does you know, figure to, out exactly what works for you. To bounce off that, like, in, in our environment, there's definitely jokes floating around or characters or bits floating around between, like, either one person or, a, or two people or a couple of people, where it's like, okay, they get it, and then it's kind and then 
if you look, if you kind of break that open, it's like, okay, they're finding something funny about that that is based on their experience or a shared experience that they had or a person they knew or a, a thing very specific to them. And then, and then um, it's very easy to kind of get caught up in, in, in a character or something. And then if you like, like, and but still is learning to know when to be like, okay, this isn't, this, it, this doesn't translate. And it's funny to me, and I find it funny, but it doesn't translate into the game. And being able to, like, a lot of the time, like, uh, like early on when I was, when, when I was in, when I didn't have a beard, like, I think, I think, uh, embarrassingly almost I, I i'd like i do a character or i i do a bit with a friend i think it'd be really funny i think it's so funny and then like i try and apply it to something and I, it just like it just wouldn't work it just wouldn't work because something was missing and that critical analysis and that and the lens the perspective of somebody else wasn't there to check this stuff that doesn't translate to people outside of your head like i think it's inherently a collaborative process um which is why difficult to make a game alone. You can make a game alone and have it be 100% about you. There's advantages in that. You can 100% get your vision down and you're not going to have to compromise with anybody or, 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 or have anybody tell you that your joke isn't funny. And you can go 100% like into that with a solo project, which I think is freeing and I think that's really cool. But, uh, but I think it's hard for me to give advice about that because all of the comedy games and work I've done has been in collaboration. Yeah. Uh, another question from Joao that I think is a really good one. Are there any books that really changed the way you work or look at things? Can you think of it? So I have a short list. You go first. Uh, let me let me look up who the author is. I think it's Mike Montero. It's it's a book called. I had my first very terrible communications agency kind of ad job um, and it's, it's about um, kind of helping you do your job better in a way where you can, you kind of learn that like it's it's one thing to do the work and then it's another thing this is kind of kind of fitting to the previous question uh, is where you one thing is doing the work and then one thing is kind of selling it to the client and also figuring out um, dancing around the fact that the client sometimes doesn't know what's best for them and I think in the same way, that's like pitching an idea to a team member is, is where it's like shit. The amount of passion I feel about this idea tells me that it's something that I have to convince other people of. I think sometimes that happens in a collaborative environment where it's just like, this, this is the good thing, let's do this, and then figuring out why. And this book, uh, Design is a Job, it's from a, a website called A Book Apart. They also have a very good podcast. Um, that's like, one of the most practical things um, for me. And then on the whole different side of the spectrum, uh, I, I love terrible sci-fi novels, uh, like, uh, you know, the Russian stuff, uh, Roadside Picnic. Not like terrible, but you know, like kind of kind of weird, um, like trashy or like very cliche sci-fi stuff. There's a lot of inspiration in that for me. And then, um, I, I recently listened to a collection of recordings from lectures by Alan Watts. He's a philosopher, and uh, he, he's all about like the, the spiritual aspect of being like connected with creativity and that kind of stuff. Uh, that's worth taking a look. At. Also, do sizzle. Here's a podcasting tip. Uh, we're getting we're getting um yeah getting I've, I've about seen the that. mic. I've seen the tip, so I've I've learned to toggle the mute button on and off. It's a learning experience. Episode one. Episode you one. Make, episode two is going to be perfect. Yes, episode one will be perfect. Uh, no more of the technical difficulties. Thanks for everybody's <laughs> important feedback because we definitely need that. Books didn't in really terms, changed the way. In terms of in terms of books, um, I can't actually think for game design. I can't think of any. I've read. I, I feel like often um, books do a terrible idea, a terrible job of translating, uh, specifically in terms of an interactive medium ideas. Like I think in terms of as a creative, where I've where I've kind of learned my lessons or, or worked on my craft or like learned from learned from people, 
has been through weirdly commentary uh, tracks of games. Um, I've listened to the commentary tracks all of uh, Portal, Half Life Two, Half Life Two Episode One, Half Life Two Episode Two. Blender games are um, very good ones. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, all the blend as, as Gravity yeah. Bone, Thirty yeah. Fuzz of Loving. Yeah, then uh, um, same actually. Yeah, that's really good. Then uh, also Team Fortress. Just in terms of like them explaining their design process, them explaining like how they arrived at certain things, why they make, why they build things in certain ways, uh, the and like through those games, you've got a whole layout of stuff like like encounter design, like yeah, interaction design, like how to how to prompt players, how to guide players through things. Um, I think uh, I think also um, theatre. Has been a has been has guided yeah. a lot for me in terms of like what it means to what it means to be a character in a in a kind of scripted world. Um, how I, I often I often a, a metaphor I've used a lot in GDC talks or whenever I'm trying to sound cleverer than I am uh, is uh, game. You're designing a stage for your player to act on. And you're designing uh, the other actors in the world to play off your character. And so, like, if you look at um, if you look at improv theater, if you look at improvisation in general, uh, if you look at like any kind of classically written play or any kind of classically written narrative, how they use environment sparingly and how they try and work things out of, um, like, for example, uh, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof is a play that's entirely set within one manor house and how and how like uh, in different adaptations of that stage design is a huge uh, is a huge yeah, I think can infer different in, in feelings and different status different status so sorry to interrupt but uh, the, yeah that's, uh, I think um, generally to zoom out on that point Generally, it's really good to just look at stuff that's kind of like the things you do, but totally different. Like looking at theater plays or like things from film or like looking at animation or comics and, and not only being inspired by games, I think is one of the most important lessons for people yeah. making games because everyone's making games about games or like inspired by other games. And that's how you end up with this insular shit. Also, people only playing or consuming or looking at people who have the exact same lives as they do. If, if we would only look at things made by dudes uh, that, are, that have this, the same life experience as us, like that, that would be an uninspired bullshit, you know, but like hearing out people and looking at things from like small creators or like unknown shit or like uh, very obscure things like uh, Go go to like a midnight screening at your local cinema or something. Like you, go, you're always gonna find something in there, and it's also you're gonna be the only person who ever jacked that shit up and, yeah. and got something out of that. I, so stealing in places where you can't be traced, it's a crime. So sorry to interrupt. That's fine. But uh, uh, I, I I'd agree with that. I was thinking about this earlier when I was listening to you talk. If I had to give um, a piece of advice, if I had to give a, a piece of advice to my younger self. It would be consciously consume. Be aware of the media you're experiencing and the kind of art you're choosing to intake. Because even by watching or even by ex stop it, experiencing, you are framing. You're, you're creating a frame of reference for yourself. You're giving us points of reference for your creative work, even if it's. Like, uh, like, just cut, like you said, it's like the broader your frame of reference, the weirder, cooler, more unique stuff that you consume, the, um, the, the more interesting your work is going to be. Yes. Essentially. Yes. Yeah, I think, um, I think it's, it's not really stealing though. It's more like getting it's inspiration. Not necessarily, uh, yeah. commercial. Yeah. That's a mistake I think people yeah. make as well. Yeah. When we say stealing, I mean, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's it's, it, it's drawing inspiration from other sources. Yeah, it's like eating a very good dish at a restaurant and then thinking about what could have been that, you know, and then cook it yourself, and it's maybe even better. Perfect metaphor again. Blue, um, blue apron uh, sucks. For <laughs> secret codes we posted on Twitter, um, generally, um, you know, sometimes stuff means something. 
Sometimes it does. Maybe it maybe it just means a little bit. You know, who knows? Um, it's it's not it's not like we put a hundred percent of what's out there out there already. Like some some things are work in progress, and sometimes you uh, you you see the 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 lock first, but they don't have the key yet. Uh, and then, you know, sometimes t th things t take time, um, and it's it's you know it's a process, and we all have to work on ourselves. And sometimes you don't get what you're looking for, but then you you can wake up tomorrow, try a little bit harder, be a little bit better at it. Do we? What? Yeah, exactly. What's the runtime on on this right now? Like, how long have we been in here? You know, well, I been, I don't have a clue. Wow, we've done ninety minutes, which is our, which is our contractually agreed. Nice. Upon yeah, I, I actually put the uh, I actually put the mask on because I was gonna say that the mask meant uh, it's time to kind of wrap things up and then. It's yeah, we also, wrap it we're, up, we're also we're also losing daylight here. It's kind of yeah. I'm yeah. trying to the I, lighting situation. I was about, uh, about William, to send a message. Uh, electricity bill, so uh. this is all we have. Oh, I've got two lights in front of me. It's still daylight. So what about final thoughts? What do you guys got on the final thoughts? We'll give them some final thoughts for the end of the night. Unity lens flare. Final thoughts? Um, I really enjoyed this. Thank you so much for inviting us on the show. Uh, I, I, um, I, hope, I hope you're happy. I hope you're all having a good day, and I hope uh, someone learned something tonight. Um, it's not a huge audience yet, but I know we're going to get there, and I know we're going to work on this together. We're gonna we're gonna just find our centers and regroup tomorrow, and it'll be a better day, and we we're all gonna be stronger, and the wiser for it, and this is a good thing, and we're gonna do it again, and we're gonna get Yay. other members of the team on. I'm so sorry that it's only the two of us, the fucking faces of, of the operation, when there's so many people out there who are doing amazing work with us. I almost said for us, but let's be real with us and uh, yeah I, I have a huge amount of respect for everyone involved in the in the creative process <laughs> and I think we should um, you don't have to switch to the other oh. I'm not going to the again. Uh, <laughs> too late <laughs> um, <laughs> whoa uh, it's so great having the voices of Rick and Morty on today man it's it was just absolutely amazing <laughs> Morty, oh, hey, hello, whoa, Morty, look at me, I'm wearing Morty, my yellow t-shirt, and I'm sitting Morty, on the sofa. Morty, we gotta, we gotta, I'm gonna take us in the static image world, Morty. I'm gonna take us in the static image universe, Morty. Oh, jeez, oh, Rick, that was really, that was really a good interview, don't you think? They really, they really told us all the tips to making good video games. Oh, uh, Morty. And about all the secrets that we wanted to know about, about the secret zoo. Morty. Unfortunately, the microphone stopped working at that point. Why do you think we got all, got all we could get out of that? Morty. Oh, I forgot all about that. You At the beginning of the podcast, you guys told exactly how to get to the secret zoo level and everything. And, like, the mics were cut out. Uh, maybe, ne shame. maybe next week. Maybe next or month. Who knows? Maybe next time. Oh, Earth. Uh, the, the, it's enough. <laughs> we're, oh, we're, uh, oh, are you tired of this now? Uh, are you saying, we want to go. Are, are you saying keep the music? No, 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 no. Don't play the music. Oh, oh, I'm not wait, done. What? Oh, you're not done. It's, not, it's enough, but it's not done. Find us on crowscrowscrows.com. Sign up. It's all GDPR legit. I promise, we're not, people watching. we're not gonna use your data. All of these people Dude, just think of the people. fucking 200 people, at least, who are gonna see this post-mortem okay. in the recording. The thing is, I'm not actually here right now. I am for the live people, but for people in the future, I'm somewhere else right now. And that's where you have to help me by signing up uh, to the newsletter. Also... <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Also... <laughs> Uh, William is on Twitter at Honest William. I'm on Twitter at Zerstörer, which is German. No one can spell it, so fuck it. I'll, I'll, I'll find and we're, him on crowscrowscrows.com. And we're also on Twitter at crowsx3. And you're on Twitter as well. Isn't oh, that right? Oh, yeah, at twitter.com slash secret zoo level. And what, wasn't there another Twitter as well, William? Oh, yeah, there's at dammit ned. At dammit, D A N N. I T N E D. That's my bot of Robert Baratheon. Yes. So so now do we kick the music? Yes. yes. Now we kick the music. Now now we can kick the music. Let's see.
Wait, I've already forgot where the music is. Where, where's the music? Oh, where's the, where's it? Oh, where is it? Oh, there it is.